STS-76 will chalk up another first in space when Rich Clifford and Linda Godwin become the first Americans to conduct a spacewalk in close proximity to the Russian station. On, we do have live pictures of the flight crew. Got mission specialist Linda Godwin. She'll be one of the spacewalkers on this flight. Pilot uh, Rich, Richard Sirfoss. And Commander Kevin Chilton. Chilton will be uh, guiding the shuttle Atlantis to a smooth docking. Mission specialist Shannon Lucid getting ready to uh, begin her stay on Mir. Mission specialist Ron Saga. And mission specialist Rich Clifford who's also serving as the flight engineer for the mission and uh, will be performing the spacewalk. And the crew uh, waving uh, for the camera. We've got about 30 minutes remaining in this built-in hold at the T-minus three hour mark. T-minus three hours in holding. This is a planned built-in hold. All continuing to go well as we count down to the launch of STS-76 with the Space Shuttle Atlantis. This is Shuttle Launch Control. This is shuttle launch control at T-minus three hours in holding. We're standing by to get live coverage of the STS-76 astronauts as they get into their launch and entry suits. And we do have coverage. Uh, we've got Commander Kevin Chilton making his third flight today. Just completed the weather briefing with uh, flight directors in Houston and uh, the weather coordinators there. Going through the traditional uh, suit up being assisted uh, with the bulky suit. Chilton will be the third uh, will dock with the Russian space station, the third to do that. Got pilot uh, Richard Sirfoss making his second flight. He's uh, known as the rendezvous expert and uh, will be responsible for the undocking of the Mir station and the subsequent fly around. Sir Frost will be assisting uh, Chilton at the flight controls in the uh, crew cabin of Atlantis. Mission Specialist Ron Sega, he's the payload commander for this mission, making his second flight. He's very familiar with the United States Russian cooperative space effort, having spent several months in Russia serving as NASA's operations director at the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center in Star City, just outside of Moscow. Across the room, the rest of the crew members are getting uh, assisted with uh, equipment they'll be taking aboard. Mission Specialist Shannon Lucid. She's got uh, Flying for the, five, the fifth time today, it's the first American woman to be launched aboard the, uh, the Mir station. She'll be staying aboard the, the Mir for four and a half months. As soon as she arrives on the Mir station, she will become part of that team. She'll be staying on Mir for about 143 days until August, conducting long duration space research. Mission specialist Rich Clifford He's also serving as the flight engineer and will be one of the crew members to make a spacewalk. The spacewalk will occur on flight day six. He's also uh, gonna be responsible for the uh, space vision system and will be helping uh, transfer supplies and equipment over to the Mir station. 
Also, he'll be assisting the commander and pilot with ascent and reentry checklists and in monitoring vehicle systems as the flight engineer. Mission Specialist Linda Godwin, she's making her third flight today. She's uh, going to join Rich Clifford in the spacewalk on flight day six, where they'll be a attaching four experiments to the mirror docking module. She'll also be involved in the unique KidSat payload and the SAR-X experiment flung again uh, with ham involving the amateur radio operation uh, from the shuttle. And also she'll be involved with the biorack experiments in the space hab. Commander Kevin Chilton ready to go this morning. And here we have the crew coming out. A profile test of the orbiter error surfaces has started. The flight control surfaces are being moved through a pre-programmed pattern to verify they are ready for launch. Next, the main engines will be gimbaled and positioned for launch. The gaseous oxygen vent hood is being retracted away from the top of the external tank. Coming up on... Six-member crew is about to embark on the first day of the nine-day flight, beginning of uh, Shannon Lucid's four-and-a-half-month stay aboard the Mir Space Station. Got a six-hour spacewalk. This marks the third flight of the shuttle to the Mir link-up. From now through 1998, there will be an American astronaut aboard the Mir Space Station. One minute. Less than one minute away now from the launch of Atlantis. Atlantis will be launched on a northerly trajectory, inclined 51.6 degrees to the equator. T minus 40 seconds. This marks the 13th night launch in the history of the shuttle program. Atlantis' onboard computers have control of vehicle functions. T minus 20 seconds. Thousands of gallons of water will be dumped on the launch platform to help absorb the shock of the 7 million pounds of thrust. Nine. We have a go for engine start. Five, four, three, two, one. 
Booster ignition and liftoff of Atlantis on the third shuttle mirror docking flight. Throttling back now, helping to ease the buildup of aerodynamic loads on the vehicle as Atlantis continues to accelerate rapidly through the dense lower altitudes, traveling now over 650 miles per hour. Time 48 seconds. All systems are performing well. Atlantis is now easing through the period of maximum dynamic pressure. And the engines are throttling back up. Atlantis, go at throttle up. Go at throttle up. All engines are now running at full throttle. All systems are performing well. Altitude is now 62,000 feet. Atlantis is traveling over 1,000 miles per hour. Atlantis continues to climb at a relatively steep angle at this point, relying heavily on the solid rocket boosters to triple its rate of speed over the next 60 seconds. Delivering a combined 6.5 million pounds of thrust, the boosters will burn out and separate at 2 minutes 6 seconds, time now 1 minute 52 seconds. Solid rocket booster chamber pressure is beginning to tail off, signaling the burnout of the twin uh, boosters. Mission Control sees a good separation. Atlantis is now flying free, powered by its own main engines. Second stage guidance is now in effect. Altitude now 178,000 feet. Downrange distance 38 miles. Atlantis performance nominal. Atlantis two engine tail. With three engines burning at 104% rated thrust, uh, the boosters have done their job as designed, the main engines as well, and Atlantis can now cross the Atlantic with only two engines should one fail. Again, all engines are performing well. Altitude is now 230,000 feet, downrange distance 58 nautical miles. Atlantis is traveling over 3,200 miles per hour. At three minutes, five seconds, uh, Atlantis's flight path is already beginning to level out a bit lightening its load as propellant burns off and continuing its rapid acceleration. All systems are continuing to perform very well. Time now, 3 minutes, 19 seconds. Let's go 
RB ignition. Liftoff confirmed. Roll program, Houston. Roger, roll, Atlantis. Flight guidance, see a good roll. Final flight, we got cold SRBs. That's firm flight, about one and a half sigma. One and a half? Yes, sir. Throttle up, we're at 104. And go at throttle up. Atlantis, go at throttle up. Go at throttle up. Flight guidance. Go ahead. Single engine press, 104. Atlanta, single engine press, 104. About a minute and a half to Miko at 833. Navis, go. Thank you. Все правильно, спасибо. 8 часов включаете. Да. Как 8? Утра? Утра, потому что 8 вечера включили. 12 часов одна сторона записи. Здрасте, а спать кто за вас будет? Не понял. А спать кто за вас будет? Да мы только встали. Не, ребята, это вы бросьте. Тут режим труда и отдыха, знаете, какой он. Во сколько у нас отбой, Вася? Посмотри, пожалуйста. Отбой у вас 7 утра. 7 утра? Да. Спасибо. Поэтому очередной сеанс. Вы уж, пожалуйста... Feet okay, I show point oh eight also. And I show eight feet also. Good. Good comparison. Go for contact conditions uh, for point one, Shelly. We're a little on the slow side. <coughs> We're at point oh eight. Seven feet. Point oh eight. Eight seconds early. Was that a beat up in, Shelly? No. Okay. It can be dead. I show you point oh eight. 
closure. Point oh eight closure. Three seconds early. Five feet point oh eight. Concur. I show point oh seven now, Chili. Okay, be that in. Raw data has picked it up, showing point one one. Three feet, point one. Two seconds early. Point one oh on the rate. Two feet, point one. Okay, hold what you got. It's sweet. Point one oh, point one oh. I agree. One foot out the window. One second early. That's six inches. Two inches. I see contact. Contact. Capture. Yes, I see a capture. Disarm PCT. You confirm capture? Capture is confirmed. Yes, I I'm five. PCT off. disarm. Flight controller power off. Three drift. Okay, you're in free drift. And we've confirmed contact and capture. Beautiful. Unbelievable, Chili. Great, 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 incredible, great, great. awesome. Sweet. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I think it's on, Rich. Metal position base. Flight rendezvous. Good rendezvous. Yes, sir. At their current RDAT, it looks like they'll get into station keeping in about six minutes, so that'll give them about eight minutes of station keeping. Okay. Latest laser mark 290, closing at decimal three. 290 at decimal three. Thank you. Flight GC. Go ahead. Okay, we went to manual key here, so they should be able to talk. We'll just keep manual key. Real flight. Yes, why? We're manually keying. We'd like uh, Moscow to try a okay. call to Mir. Okay, stand by. Hey, Rio. Go. Uh, Mr. Slovioff is ready for the for the docking conference. Okay. And he's right there, and he just gave you a go, so you might respond on loop one. Flight GNC, PCT is disarmed, and flight control powers off. Contact and Copy. Copy contact, capture, and we confirm Mir free drift. Copy that. Flight Rio, free drift.
Atlantis Houston, your go for shuttle ODS hatch opening for Delta P under point two. Okay, we're opening the hatch. And we have a good image of you, Jelly. The two of you look great. So it looks like they're welcoming you aboard. Uh, this is a view coming down uh, out of the uh, airlock and taking a turn at the ODS, and now we're entering the uh, docking adapter and heading over to the Mir Space Station. As you can see throughout uh, this entire tour, uh, it gets pretty crowded in the passageways there. Most of these bags are filled with transfer items going one way or the other. Uh, here, Ron and uh, Yuri Yusachev are working some of those uh, transfers. I couldn't resist the urge in a few spots in here to do a few aileron rolls uh, on the way. You always do them in the airplane. You might as well do them here. That's right. A few less Gs than we uh, pull fly in that eagle, though, right? Roger that. Right. Uh, our transit route uh, today on this tour starts with the uh, docking adapter, and then uh, on our way to the node, we are transiting through the uh, crystal module. Notice the ducting on the way is air ducting for uh, the Mir's uh, requirements. The big cable that we're going to see all the way into the base block is uh, for the bits new that sends audio through the orbiter system from we have a camera hooked up in there. Very shortly here we're going to get to the uh, node and take a turn. And I believe I went into Spectre next. We'll see when we get going here. Well finally space uh, vehicles are big enough to get a little lost in, huh Rick? <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Uh, we'll we'll see that graphically illustrated here in a little bit when we come back to the node. This is inside the Spectre module, which will be basically Shannon's home for the next uh, several months. She'll be conducting her experiments in here, and uh, uh, this is actually quite a roomy module, and it's uh, perhaps because it's uh, not as full of the uh, transfer items and, uh, and other equipment as some of the other modules are, but it's uh, starting to get that way. I'm going to do a U-turn down at the end here because there's no connection back. It's uh, Everything, as you know, is plugged in uh, to the central node. You have the Spectre module, the uh, 
crystal module leading into it, and then, of course, the base block on the other side. This is uh, transit back out of the specter into the uh, node, and from here, it should be going into the Kavod 2 module after that quick aileron roll. It's about a T-38 roll rate there, I believe. Looked about right. Yeah, this is the Kavod 2 module. Right at the, uh, in the center of the field of view is one of the gyrodynes. Uh, we transferred one of those yesterday as one of our first transfer items, a, a new refurbished gyrodyne to the mirror, and then uh, we're taking back uh, an old one for uh, refurbishment and then subsequent resupply. It uh, points out a great capability that our shuttle has in taking uh, down mass from Earth orbit back down to the Earth and, uh, uh, in applications such as uh, space station or uh, uh, working with our partners on board Mir. Copy. Getting just about to the end of, uh, of the Kavant 2 module. And the metal containers are Russian water containers, and the white bags are our uh, CWC bags that uh, we've been transferring over, filling them up uh, out of the shuttle's um, fuel cell water that's produced and taking it over to Mir. I think uh, if I'm correct, we're about half through with that water transfer and fill operations right now. About right. Back out of Quad 2. Uh, into uh, basically the cosmonauts' living quarters next as we go into the base block, the headquarters, if you will, of the Mir space station. And this little uh, spinning is uh, just to graphically illustrate the point that uh, you can get lost in this uh, space station and you have to keep yourself oriented. And when you get to the node, stop and take a second and figure out which way you're really going. Now you get used to it, though, after one or two transits, and it really isn't too bad to do. Here, uh, Juliana Franco and Chile and Shannon are discussing some of the transfer operations. Uh, Chile has Chile and uh, Yuri are holding the, uh, one of the joint documents that we use to uh, work together. Yuri Yusichev, uh, in the background by the table, is uh, doing some prep for some transfer uh, items back from the mirror to the shuttle. From here, we're going to proceed into the Kavant 1 module, and at the end of that is the Soyuz, and uh, we'll get all the way down to the end picture here, and uh, I poke the camera in Boyd's board on the uh, Soyuz capsule, and uh, we'll see that shortly. Rick, it looks like you have a little pulley system to move along with. Yeah, that's, that's true, Dave. They've got, uh, the Russians use uh, lots of budgies, both for hold downs and for uh, for pulling yourself along, and, and they're quite handy for translating. Uh, as you can see, uh, I remarked to one of the other crew members earlier today that moving around beer is kind of like being a spelunker exploring caves and a lot of uh, long, narrow, narrow passageways uh, for transit. Here are the uh, Russian suits uh, inside the Soyuz, and uh, not only the all three, of course, are Russian equipment, but uh, Shannon's suit is in there. It was checked out yesterday, and she's fully and officially a member of the Mir-21 crew now. Quick turnaround out of uh, Soyuz and Russia back. At this point, I was beginning to worry about the uh, battery on my compact portable light, so I kind of speeded the rate up a little bit here. We certainly hope not to use those mo mo Soyuz modules, but it's nice to know they're there should it become necessary. But this, uh, we just went by uh, one of the little living spaces. Uh, both, Yuri, both Yuri's have their own individual compartments for sleep, and it's a very nice uh, opportunity for them to have some privacy uh, during the course of their long stays on board beer. Again, we're uh, approaching the node here shortly, and uh, then we'll be taking the pathway back to the space shuttle. There we go. We found.
on the right one, and we're on the way. about ready to enter the docking module. And if you notice, uh, in the lower center part of the field of view, you see a, a target similar to the, well, it is the exact docking target that Chile used uh, to dock yesterday. And we'll play uh, ODS centerline camera here for just a minute and do our own little docking maneuver. Copy that, Rick, and uh, we have to use that thing quite a few more times, so Let's be careful with it. You bet. Notice it didn't even touch it. We just uh, took the video camera down to it. Back uh, into the shuttle ODS, where uh, Chile is doing some work. And from here, we're going to take a turn aft to the space hab, as Ron is taking some transfer items uh, out of the space hab tunnel into the mirror. Uh, and uh, I guess I'd like to begin by saying this is kind of a, a bittersweet moment for us, and uh, one also filled with a lot of satisfaction. Um, we've had a, a wonderful time on the, the uh, near Atlantis complex here, and it started off just fantastic with the warmest welcome anyone can imagine from uh, Yuri Adin and Yuri Devach. <laughs> and, um, and it just has gone uphill from there with uh, a great uh, working relationship between the two crews and certainly the sense of satisfaction uh, that we feel for having uh, got the job done is, is tremendous. And uh, Ron Sega, who is my uh, payload commander, has been uh, sweating the uh, transfer both to and from Mir from the shuttle perspective. And uh, Yuri and Yuri have been working real hard on the Mir side, and it's been a great team effort, and I think we're there. Uh, that's, that's the satisfaction part. Uh, truly the, uh, the sad part will be to bid farewell to Shannon, and Yuri and Yuri. Uh, this is a, a tremendous team. Uh, we're going to miss them. Um, you know, uh, we know we'll see Shannon again when she comes back on STS-79, but, uh, but there's a big ocean between Russia and America, and, uh, it, and I'm, we're not all so confident or, sure, or certain, I should say, that we'll ever see our two friends, uh, Yuri and Yuri, again. Matt Houston, uh, we'll, we'll bid the formal farewell, and I'd like to extend my thanks to Soup in Moscow for their great support, and to all the teams at uh, the MCC. Yeah. I know that Kevin said a very good word. It's really been a very tension work. It was hard 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 Грузы, которые необходимы было, были перенесены. Остались несколько кабелей, но это по сравнению со всей совместной программой, это, естественно, мелочи. Легко было работать, как говорил один наш общий знакомый, с такой командой, как СТ-76. Пролетели очень быстро эти пять дней. Сейчас просто не верится, что буквально сегодня, вот через несколько минут мы улетим в этом направлении вперед дальше э, экипаж СТ-76 повернет по модулю Т, пройдет через СО. Дальше мы попрощаемся, закроем дверь, и Юрий закроет дверь, которая здесь называется люком. Мы будем наблюдать друг за другом дальше только через иллюминатор. Они будут смотреть на нас, мы на них, а завтра будет расстыковка. Ну, Естественно, грустно расставаться с такой хорошей командой. Я хочу сказать большое спасибо. Мы очень хорошо поработали. Всем большое спасибо, ребята. Я думаю, Юра добавит свои пожелания.
Atlantis Houston, no action on the Spec 88 evaporator feed line message. EV1 Houston. Uh, go ahead, Dave. Yeah, Linda, and uh, we see that cable cutter uh, at the end of the tether doing some motion also. We suggest that you take the tether that's on your wrist, the wrist end, and move that to your mini workstation, uh, particularly before you start translating down the sills. Uh, And Rich, it just looks spectacular out there doing a spacewalk on the Atlantis Mirror Space Complex. Absolutely beautiful.
потому что чтобы в общем-то вы уточнили у своих коллег и потом кое-что сделали готов да готовы значит у нас 15 15 43 средствами шатла будет разворот должен пойти разворот Сейчас пока кабель дотянем. Дальше пусть пока пройдет. Вот пока мы тут монтируем, вот по, по инкубатору это была информация. Принимайте нас, слышите? Да, слышим. Ну вот живая работа. Кронштейн-то русский наш. И вам его не снимать, вот Виктор Ильич говорит. Да. Да. Now we're inside the space tab. That's the gyro die that uh, we're returning to Earth that was on board Mir. It's all stowed and buttoned down, ready for uh, re-entry. And as we come aboard uh, the space tab, I'm going to cut to some live TV of uh, Ron, who's working in there, and he's going to take over the narrative describing some of his uh, bio-rack operations. 
So uh, we can take downlink to payload one now. Hello, Linda and I are in the uh, space hab, which you probably saw from the uh, view that's past the docking module in the aft part of the payload bay of the shuttle, connected by a tunnel. And we have two main activities in the space hab. One is the transfer of equipment. And we uh, have it stored in bags such as this. And we remove it and take it to the air. And we also return items from Russia, in this case, from the Russian uh, space station. In this case, it's empty food containers. So the, the number of items that we have include food, clothing, water, and science equipment for Shannon to enable her to do the long duration studies that will take place over the next roughly 140 days. This is going to be important for us in, the, uh, in working toward the International Space Station to get more experience of long duration flight and work as well as technology development of our equipment that we will eventually fly on the space station, as well as beginning to uh, increase our database in the long duration studies of science. Now, we have one example of that here in the space hab. It's called BioRack. It's behind Linda and I. And it has flown three times before. It's a, uh, it's a mini biology laboratory built uh, by the European Space Agency. It's flown three times on the shuttle. Uh, STS Mission 61A, the International Microgravity Laboratory 1 and 2, and now, of course, on our flight. Uh, yes, sir, that's affirmative. Uh, also, there there is uh, one little delta to your message. Uh, uh, the actual NBC show is called uh, Nightside uh, versus News Channel. We copy Chile. Houston, Lance, we've completed docking ring extension. Uh, the ring initial position I came on was tunnel position base at 69, 72, and 69. And thanks, Rich. Uh, those numbers all look good to us, and uh, we think uh, that 72 really reflects a bias, and it also is actually at 69 percent. Okay, that's what we heard pre-flight. Thanks a lot. Houston, Atlantis, Comtech from the Medbeck on air to ground two. Atlantis, Houston, loud and clear on air to ground two. Copy physical separation. Executing separation. Concur. We have a spectacular view of the Mir space station over the South Pacific.
soon to reach uh, two and a half times the speed of sound, at which point pilot Rick Sirfoss will fire up auxiliary power unit number three.